to refer to the emotional part. These are the two parts of the mind. Today the modern psychologists use the word cognitive to refer to the thinking part and affective to refer to the emotional part. Sigmund Freud used the word ego to refer to the thinking part and used the word id, 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 to refer to the emotional part. If you have read about the first sermon of the Buddha, which is called the Dhamma Chakka Pavattana Sutra, there the Buddha says, there are two extremes to be avoided. One is devotion to sensual pleasures. And the other is self-mortification. What that means is that we have these emotions and we are normally carried away by emotions. This is the problem. And uh, of course to explain this fully, I have to say that we have to start by thinking that we are simply organisms in an environment. Organism is like a machine. There are some machines where you put a coin and also uh, press a button and something comes out. You can buy something that way. So like that, our body is also a machine like that. When light falls on the eye, you see. When sounds come to the ears, you hear. When the smell comes to the nose, you experience the smell. Then the tongue affected, you taste. And the body is touched, you feel the touch. That is what is called perception. But that is not the end of it. Perception is only one part of the reaction, the first part of the reaction. This is what is called a chain reaction. That means a series of reactions taking place, one after the other. The first is seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching. And then, all the data received through the senses are carried through the nerves to the brain. And the brain begins to think and interpret what was seen, heard, smelled, tasted, touched, which means giving meaning to what is perceived. And that is what is called mano. The perception part, the Buddha called vijnana, today translated as consciousness. It's not real consciousness. That's also a mistake. It's perception. Vijnana is perception, not consciousness. It is only when the thinking begins in the brain, you begin to interpret and give meaning to what was seen or heard or smelled or taste, touch. And that meaning <coughs> provides the consciousness. You become conscious of a world. That is, you have given meaning to what you have seen, heard, smelled, tasted, touched. But that is not the end. Now, if some person comes here and says something, and that person <coughs> you see with your eye and you <coughs> hear with your ears, that's not the end. Your mind, which is the thinking part, begins to interpret what was said. And if you interpret that as an insult to you, what happens? You become angry. How does the anger come? A message goes from the brain to a gland, like uh, the adrenal gland, 
and a hormone called adrenaline is thrown into the blood and the blood begins to carry this to the whole body. And then the changes take place in the body. The activities in the body change. The heart begins to beat fast, the breathing becomes heavier, the muscles become tense, the eyes, the pupils dilate, and some animals like the cat, you see the hair standing on end, and uh, in the human beings you will see the blood rushing to the face, and the face becomes red, and uh, also the face becomes distorted, and the face looks very ugly. You see, all that happens, that is what is called the emotion of anger as a result. You have become angry. You see, that emotion is not so much a mental thing, it's a physical thing. The mental thing was really the thinking and reasoning and uh, forming the concept, the interpretation. Now, once the emotion is aroused, you feel uncomfortable, whether it is anger or whether it is a desire, like a sexual desire, or even if it is fear or worries, every emotion is uncomfortable. And then you want to get rid of this discomfort. And you get rid of this discomfort by releasing the tension in action to obtain what you desire or to get rid of what you hate or to run away from what you fear. Whatever you do, the action is a release of tension. And when the tension is released, then you are comfortable again. That's why if you are angry and you kill the other person, you will be very happy after that because you have killed, you see. So all that is the release of tension. So the action part is what is called karma. The word karma really refers to the action part. So that whole process, which is the, the reaction, the chain reaction, that is all that is really what we call the mind and then the action part, which is a physical behavior. And this is what the Buddha called Dukkha, which is an emotional reaction, which is ultimately happening unconsciously. You are not even conscious of what is going on. You are not doing it uh, after thinking, now I must become angry and then become angry. No. It just happens and you can't even control it. And you begin to do things that you repent later. You see, all that is because it is happening unconsciously. And that unconsciousness part is what is called avijja, today translated as ignorance. It is not ignorance, it is unconsciousness. And what is today translated as uh, craving, which is the translation of the word tanha, it's not just craving, it is the emotional reaction. That is what is tanha. So, what the Buddha pointed out was to be free from all this unhappiness and trouble, the only thing is to learn to stop this reaction. You have to learn to stop that reaction. <clears throat> but how can you stop the reaction? Because it is happening unconsciously. So the only way to stop that reaction is to become conscious of that. This is something that even Sigmund Freud discovered later. Buddha made use of this, and that is what is called sati, satipatthana, which is today translated as mindfulness.